anytime, anywhere. Award-winning coverage you can count on. This is ABC 13 News. Thanks for watching 13 News at 5 this evening. We begin with the threat of rain, very strong winds, and some snow showers that could hit parts of our viewing area later tonight. We begin our storm coverage with the very latest on the outages in our area. Exactly what you want to know right now. Appalachian Power is reporting that Lynchburg City still has around 25,000 people without electricity. Now the silver lining here in this whole mess is it's really bringing people together lending a helping hand. Neighbors opening their doors to neighbors, even power crews are pitching in to get our area back on its feet. Mark Kelly caught up with them today. He's live outside our studio with more and Mark. This is a huge undertaking along with talking to the crews out there on the roads. We're also talking to Jerry Matheny, communications director of Appalachian Power Company live on the phone tonight. Jerry, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Okay, everyone wants to know. It's the question we keep getting on every on the streets phone calls in the newsroom. When is my power going to be back on? So we are dealing with a tornado watch tonight and the threat of severe thunderstorms. Take a look at the scene today in downtown Lynchburg. Lots of wet roads after some storms rolled through, bringing in heavy rain, lightning and thunder. Well, new at five, the child abuse trial of a former Appomattox County school bus driver is expected to go late into the night tonight. The case against Nancy Davis alleges that on May 5th of last year, she allowed two 15 year olds to bully a 10 year old while riding home from school. Jeremy Mills is covering the trial from us for Appomattox this evening. And Jeremy, the prosecution describes that abuse as nothing short of torture. Big word there. Good evening, everyone. New at five after nine seasons, Virginia Tech head basketball coach Seth Greenberg has been fired. Sports director Dennis Carter joins us now with more on this breaking news out of Blacksburg tonight. And Dennis, a lot of people not exactly expecting this one. Sure, I know so many of you probably just hugged your kids when they got off the bus tonight. And as the headlines continue to come this evening, your children may have some questions for you tonight at the dinner table. Well, Linda Grubba joins me now. She's a Campbell County School counselor. Linda, this has happened hundreds and hundreds of miles away now, but this hits home for so many families. What do we say to our kids right now tonight when we sit down at the table this evening? Limit exposure to the coverage. Turn off the TV Turn sometimes. off the TV. Um, and afterwards engage in normal family activity. But Monday morning, I would think, take advantage of your school counselor too. This happened in a school. Yes. There might be some reticence about going to school Monday morning on a parent's part or in the students. Emergency rooms notorious for those long waits. An Abington man though contacted ABC 13 News after he says he waited at Lynchburg General's nine hours for treatment. The hospital admits that sure is long. So why does it take an entire work day to get emergency care, emergency care? And what's the hospital doing to fix it? Mark Kelly took those questions to the Lynchburg General ER and joins us live in the newsroom tonight, Mark. Oh my God, oh my, oh my God. God, oh my God. That explosion ripped through the Ann Breyer Shopping Center in Amherst last night after a propane tank caught on fire. Those witnesses could not believe their eyes. Now investigators here say they know what led to the whole thing. You know, people miles away could feel this explosion, but very few were up close and personal to see exactly what happened. And then tonight we're hearing from someone who witnessed the whole thing firsthand. Dominique Ricks is live from the shopping center tonight in Amherst. And Dominique, you spoke to the man who actually had to evacuate before the blast. We know a lot of you are working really hard right now to make ends meet, and there's one thing that we all need that costs a lot right now, and that is gas. This time of year, there's the promise of Santa bringing gifts on Christmas to good little boys and girls that keeps our children on their best behavior. Works like a charm in my house. But Santa has a little helper popping up at homes before the big day, Elf on the Shelf and the whole family is getting in on the fun. The Widener family has a guest for the first time this holiday season. I thought, you know what? This house needs an elf on the shelf. Well, Sylvie, as they call her, keeps an eye on nine-year-old twins Olivia and Ty. She's having a little fun of her own. Apparently, some elves just move around the house um, and they sit in different places. Our elf gets into some trouble and some mischief. Put flour on the table and she made a, um, 
snow angel. At nighttime, she went in and duct taped all this area. Like so many families, mom Amy is documenting it all on Facebook. And with so many elf ideas popping up online, the popularity is surging. So we've had lots of calls and then had to run. We've reordered two and three times. Luckily, they're, they're quick in responding. Danny Givens is having a hard time keeping it stocked to Givens Books. Typically, it's earlier in the season, but I mean, it's even suddenly now late into December. And even though Sylvie the Elf will be leaving the Wideners on Christmas Eve, Amy has learned a lot from her and getting her kids to behave during her time in their house. I think I've got some incentives planned throughout the year because even though she's not here, the kids need to know that they've got eyes watching them. Now, every elf comes with a book explaining how it works, you know, that he or she comes to your house and hides every morning, watching how the kids are behaving, then flies to the North Pole to tell Santa if your child has been good or bad. Elf on the Shelf is about $30. There's even a movie out now, complete with music. There's a musical <laughs> to get your family in the Elf on the Shelf spirit. Sometimes we need just a little bit of hope to get us through tough times. And that's what five-year-old Nathan Norman and his family have decided. Nathan is fighting a very aggressive cancer in his brain and his spine, all with the magic of his favorite holiday. The scrapbook of Nathan Norman's life is filled with his battle against cancer, a fight that started in 2009 when he was just a year old. And at 5.30 in the afternoon, we received the call. Um, it's never good when the doctor's office calls you after hours. Um, and he just kept saying on the phone, there's been an abnormality. I'm so sorry, there's been an abnormality. And I said, are you saying that our son has cancer? It started off as brain cancer. Now he has a tumor in his spine, too. Surgery and chemo haven't cured Nathan. His latest scan in August shows the tumors are growing again and fast. As he begins a new round of chemo, he had one request for his mom and dad. Nathan had asked when we got home if we would... Um, put up our Christmas tree and our lights that he thought that would make him feel better when he didn't feel good. Like that Santa star and that big star on the very top. Does it matter if people think we're crazy? Does it matter? Um, absolutely not. If this is his last Christmas and, and he can spend it for four months, absolutely. The spirit of Nathan's early Christmas the will to heal this sick little boy is spreading. Yeah, but I see a little present in there. We have started having friends that put up their trees and their outside lights and sending pictures to us. Um, some people have designated their tree as called Nathan's tree. Then the Christmas cards started showing up from friends, family, people they don't even know. Every day he goes to the mailbox and he receives just, you know, 20, 30 cards. Mom, look. Oh, do they give you Christmas free? cards. It's September. I don't even know where people are getting Christmas cards this time of year. I don't think I even have, have had Christmas cards in my whole life. What does that make you feel like when you see all those cards in your mailbox? It makes me think that there's a lot of money. It was surprising because it's like, wow, how did they know? How did they find out? Um, it makes you wonder, but it's been, uh, it's been inspiring and uplifting to know that you know people are rallying around your son. That support is giving the Normans the faith to face whatever the days ahead may bring. When you ask Nathan, you know, are you scared? He'll say, you know, no, God is with me. You know, his sister asked him one day, she said, Nathan, um, are you scared that you might go see Jesus soon? And um, as a mom, I'm saying, nobody's seeing Jesus today. Everybody's staying right here. We'll see Jesus when we're old. Um, but Nathan said, no, you know, that, that he's not scared to go see Jesus, that he would just miss mommy and daddy. As a parent, you grieve over the path that God has chosen for you. Um, after this third progression that he's had, you know, for two weeks, I couldn't get through a day without just bursting in tears. Um, but then you have, to, you have to move on and you have to enjoy the day. We're enjoying what we have and what we know right now. And so what we have right now is Christmas on September 26, 2012, and Christmas in October and Christmas in November. If, we, if he asks us to leave it up, we may leave it up all year because, you know, in all honesty, every day should be like Christmas. I mean, we should always have that spirit of Christmas in us. 
takes a little boy to remind us of that. You know, it's really hard not to get emotionally involved when you meet a boy like Nathan and you understand exactly what he is up against right now. Well, the ABC 13 News family is rallying around him too. We're sending him this Christmas card. Everyone ran in here so we could take that picture today for him. And I told Nathan I'd like to see him get 100 Christmas cards in his mailbox every day. And you should have seen that smile, and that is where I need your help. I have his address for you online right now at WSCT.com. Send a note, a card, put up your own Christmas lights or some decorations, take a picture, and send it to this little guy. A little girl from Lynchburg fighting a very rare form of cancer made the pages of the Wall Street Journal. We showed you Edie Gilger's headline when it hit the newsstands last week. And tonight, we're sitting down with her parents to talk about their journey and why doctors are so interested in her case. And now, you get to meet little Edie and find out about her big miracle. She was diagnosed um, in December of 2009, and she was um, six months old. The first thing that uh, went through my mind was kind of why her, uh, why Edie. She had a large tumor, um, that one growing out of her right adrenal gland, one growing out of her left adrenal gland, and they met sort of in the middle of her abdomen and then she also had spots um, on the back of up her spine. That tumor was closing off liver and you know just every her stomach and that and so it was kind of just shutting down her body. It was mind-blowing to say the least. It was neuroblastoma stage four and it left it tiny Edie Gilger at UVA for months Good job. Getting 10 rounds of chemo so doctors could even operate to take those tumors out in June of 2010. It seemed like such a huge thing to us, but it was just the beginning of what we would see over the next year and a half as far as just sort of chipping away at the disease that was in our body. We sort of knew that in the beginning, that it would be multiple surgeries, multiple rounds of chemo and all that sort of thing to get through it. In January of 2011 was when she was finally diagnosed for the first time cancer free. But three short months later, the next scan brought bad news. Edie's cancer was back. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Doctors operated again at UVA, but also suggested that Emily and Nick take Edie to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in case the tumors came back again. UVA said, you know, this is where the cutting edge medication, medicine for children is being researched, it's being prescribed, you know, this is where you need to be. And that is where they found their miracle in modern day medicine. The one that took their little girl from this to this. Swipe, swipe, It's an experimental drug from Pfizer called crizotinib that only nine other children in the entire world were taking for neuroblastoma. Shake it up. You know, we just decided that here was this drug that was being put in front of us, nothing that any of us had ever been exposed to before, and it was a sign that we needed to go ahead and take that leap of faith and see what would happen. What happened is something really just amazing. Something the Gilgers haven't seen in their daughter's short life. It's been six months and this is the longest period of time that Edie has gone cancer free. It's a camera. Uh, Edie will likely stay on the drug for the next five years under the very watchful eye of doctors in Charlottesville and Philadelphia. We're living in the moment with it right now and we're so happy to have her healthy right now that we do think, okay, five years down the road, if something comes up, we'll deal with it when it comes up. This is going to be a part of our life for the rest of her life. I say mom. But she's going to grow up to be a normal, everyday child. She's going to get in trouble. She's going to make us laugh. You know, she's going to be, you know, be our daughter. Now, Edie's form of neuroblastoma is genetic. All of the children who have responded to the drug have defects in their gene known as ALK. It's really, really rare. 600 to 700 kids per year develop neuroblastoma, and of that, only about 1 to 2% have the defective ALK gene.